Hi everyone, my name's Diabetor, and today I'm going to show you how to beat Commander Nihal easily. Beating Commander Nihal is important because he guards half of the Halig Tree Secret Medallion, which can be used to reach the Consecrated Snowfield and the Halig Tree. Commander Nihal himself is actually a pretty simple boss. He hits hard, but he's not too hard to deal with if you know what you're doing. The real challenge that gives most people trouble during this fight are the two summons that he has at the beginning of it. However, with the right setup, we can take them down pretty easily, and then it's just a matter of taking out Nihal, which is just a matter of patience and timing. Today, I'm going to show you three different ways to make this fight as easy as possible, all without using cheese or summons. I'll also teach you how to identify and dodge his attacks so that he might not even be able to hit you. Hopefully, this guide will help you to develop an understanding of the mechanics in Elden Ring. And then you'll be able to apply what you learned to be able to master the rest of the game, in addition to Nihal. First off, we're going to grab two items in Lane Dell. From the West Capital Rampart side of Grace, we're going to follow the wall to the south, and we're going to head up to the Royal Coliseum. Instead of going past that duelist, I like to take this path up to the left here, which takes us directly to where we want to go, which is the Star Fist. While we're here, we're also going to head around the corner and go to the front entrance of the Coliseum, where we can grab the Ritual Shield Talisman. This talisman is going to make it a lot easier to survive Commander Nihal's attacks. After that, we're going to head over to the Gatefront Ruins in Limgrave. Here, we're going to grab the Lord Sworn's Greatsword out of the first carriage next to the Site of Grace. We're actually going to be using this thing as a tool to cast the Stormblade Ash of War, so technically you can use any kind of sword or greatsword that you want, but I figure that one's the easiest one to grab, because while we're in the area, we're also going to grab the Stormsnop Ash of War. Up next, we're going to head to the northern part of Limgrave to summon Water Village. In Summon Water Village, we're going to head to the cellar, which requires a single stone sword key to enter, and in the cellar, we're going to grab the Green Turtle Talisman to increase our stamina regen. After that, we're going to head to the Minor Erd Tree in the capital outskirts to the north of Lane Dell. The nearest site of grace to this is the Hermit Merchant's Shack, so make sure you grab that in case you die over here. Once we get to the Erd Tree itself, there's a basin at the base of it, and in it, there will be the Winged Crystal Tier for our Wondrous Physic. After that, we're going to head to Caria Manor at the northwestern end of Liurnia of the Lakes. You can get over here really quickly by taking this teleporter in this gazebo right here, just north of the Academy Gate Town. You can take that teleporter to the King's Realm Ruins, which is just south of Caria Manor. When you head inside Caria Manor, make a right, and that'll bring you over to this room, and on that corpse is the crafting recipe for freezing pots. Now we're going to grab the Antsper Rapier. In order to do that, there's an NPC that we need to kill, who drops it when she dies. Since she uses the Rapier itself, and the Rapier is strong because it does Scarlet Rot buildup, we're going to want to make it as easy as possible to kill her. So on the eastern end of Limgrave, I'd like to take the elevator down to the Schieffer River. And then all the way on the northern end of the Schieffer River is another elevator that will take us up to the deep Schieffer River well. Activating this elevator requires two Stone Sword Keys, so make sure you bring those. And when you ride it up, it's going to take you up to the deep Schieffer River well in Caelid. Grab the Site of Grace, and then follow the canyon to the west. Underneath this first golem here, you'll find the Spiked Palisade Shield, which is a great shield that does 70 bleed buildup on hit. To complement that shield, we're going to head over to the Lux Ruins near the Erdtree Gazing Hill in the Altus Plateau. You can also get to the Lux Ruins by heading directly north from the Grand Lift of Dectus, but I find it easier to just do it at the Erdtree Gazing Hill. You can do a little parkour to jump up the cliff here, and then I like to stand on top of this wall. There's a scarab that'll teleport away if you get too close to it, so you're going to need a ranged weapon or throwing pots or something like that. And once you kill it, it will drop the Shield Crash Ash of War. Now we're going to go get the Antsper Rapier at the Shaded Castle, which can be located to the north of the Erdtree Gazing Hill and the Lux Ruins. We're going to head around to the west side of the Shaded Castle, where we'll find the NPC that wields the Antsper Rapier. Before you go to fight this NPC, make sure you upgraded the Spiked Palisade Shield and put the Shield Crash Ash of War on it. I also used a cold infusion so that it does both bleed buildup and frostbite buildup. But even if you don't have the cold infusion, the bleed should still be enough to make this pretty easy. 
Once you get to this rocky area, find the NPC, Mally Murray, and you're going to want to lead her away from that golem that's in the background. The golem will come after you, so you're going to want to make this quick before it can reach you. Cast any buffs that you want, and then pull out the shield, and just hold down L2 and hit her with Shield Crash. Shield Crash can hit up to 5 times, and not only does it do a hard knockdown at the end of it, which makes it great for stunlocking NPCs, but it can also proc that bleed and that frostbite on each hit, which makes it really easy to bleed or frostbite an enemy. Now for the Ash of War that we're going to put on the Ansper Rapier, we're going to head over to the Swamp of Aeonia in Kaelid and grab the Poisonous Mist Ash of War. So I like to head over to this, the Southern Swamp Shore side of Grace, and you see on the map there's this curve here, there's a little indentation at the bottom of it, just to the north of that, there's a landmass that's a little bit brighter than the surrounding swamp, so put a marker there because that's where we're going. This involves killing another scarab that will teleport away if you get too close to it, so I recommend bringing a ranged weapon like a bow, or spells, or you can even hit it with something like fire pots. In my case, I used the jar cannon, and on this particular character, I didn't have the strength required to wield it, so I put on the Star Scourge Heirloom just to make sure I could do enough damage to kill this thing at one shot so it doesn't teleport away. And upon death it drops the Poisonous Mist Ash of War. You can put that on the Rapier. So by default the Rapier does I think 50 Scarlet Rot build up on hit. And then if you cast Poisonous Mist, not only does it create a cloud of poison, but it also buffs the Rapier with poison. So now it does both Scarlet Rot and poison build up on hit. Finally, I headed over to Stillwater Cave in Lyurnia of the Lakes, which is located underneath the cliff where the lake-facing cliffs site of grace is. Killing the Clean Rot Knight boss here gives us the Winged Sword Insignia Talisman. So now we're going to go over our build. I want to start off by saying that on this picture, you'll see that I'm using the Antsper Rapier. That slot is the one we're going to swap out for whichever weapon we're going to use to fight Nihal. Now first, if you look on the left side of the screen, you'll see my stats. For this video, I used a level 65 character with plus 15 weapons. I am significantly underleveled for this fight. Preferably, when you fight Nihal, you'll hopefully be at least level 80, maybe 90, or maybe even 100 really. And you should have your weapons upgraded to plus 15 to about plus 18. Now looking at the stats themselves, my Vigor stat is my highest stat at 45. I recommend at least 40 Vigor for this fight. I went with 45 just to give myself a little extra juice, which I needed to do because I was in New Game Plus 2 when I did this guide and Niall was kicking my ass at just 40 Vigor. Other than that, my stats are all chosen pretty much just to meet the minimum requirements for all the weapons and armor that we're using here. In the middle of the screen, you'll see my weapons, talismans, and armor. So the two weapons that we're going to use in all three of these methods are the Misery Cord, or whatever weapon you want, which is going to be equipped with the Golden Vow Ash of War, which we're going to use as a buff before we start the fight. I chose the Misery Cord because we're also going to rely on stance breaking him for a couple of these methods, and using the Misery Cord gives us really good critical damage because it gets a crit multiplier of 140. The other weapon that we use in all methods is the Star Fist with the Storm Stomp Ash of War. Storm Stomp makes it really easy to stun the knights that Nile will summon at the beginning of the fight. Those guys are really resistant to hit stun and they have a ton of hyper armor on a lot of their attacks, so using Storm Stomp to stun them makes it really easy to get hits on them without having them fucking murder you. And I went with the Star Fist specifically because it gets really fast charged R2s that do a lot of poise damage, which makes it really easy to do a charged R2 after hitting the knight with a storm stomp and that makes it really easy to break their stance because you can do two or three of them in a row and then obviously once you break their stance you can get a riposte and that'll kill them pretty quick after that the weapon that we're going to be using to fight nile himself is in the ants per rapier slot the first method and probably the easiest one is going to be a great sword or a sword but the storm blade ash of war which you saw in the intro to this video the second method will be with the Antsper Rapier and a Poisonous Mist Ash of War. And the third method will be using the Star Fist itself. For our talismans, I have the Green Turtle Talisman equipped. This increases the rate at which our stamina regenerates, which makes it a lot easier to do rolls and attacks without having to worry about managing your stamina so much. Then we've got the Winged Sword Insignia that we picked up, 
In my case, I used Millicent's Prosthesis because it gives you the same effect as the Winged Sword Insignia, and it also raises our Dexterity by 5, which I needed in order to be able to use the Ant Spur Rapier. If you don't have Millicent's Prosthesis, then that Winged Sword Insignia will do just fine. Just make sure that you can meet the stat requirements for the weapons that we're using. And then finally, I've got the Ritual Shield Talisman. This increases our defenses by, I think, 20% when we're at full health which means that the first attack that an enemy does, like Commander Nile, is going to do a lot less damage to us, which makes it a lot easier to survive in the long term. And obviously, if you get hit, you can heal back up to full, and you'll get that effect back. And then in the fourth talisman slot, I don't have anything equipped here. I think for the video, I had the axe talisman equipped, or possibly the claw talisman equipped, both of which are good choices, but you can use whatever talisman you prefer in that slot. I don't really have any major recommendations, except maybe the Spear Talisman if you're using the Antsbury Rapier. And then for armor, you can go with whatever armor you want. For the Crystal Tears, we have the Winged Crystal Tier, which decreases our equip load. It essentially puts you into light rolls no matter what you're wearing, so that makes it really easy to dodge enemy attacks. And after that, you can use whatever other tiers you want. I recommend maybe the Green Burst tier, or if you're using some kind of an elemental infusion, you might use the Magic Shredding tier, or the Fire Shredding tier, or whatever. In my case, I use the Strength Knot Crystal tier, just to increase my strength by 10, so I could squeeze a bit more damage out of this character, who is at low level. And finally, on the bottom right, you'll see the items that I have equipped. First, I have Poison Bone Darts. These are really good for applying poison to Niall, because he doesn't have very much in the way of status resistances. So he's weak to poison, rot, bleed, frostbite. He's weak to all of those things. So any build can use poison bone darts and poison him really easily, which will take off a lot of extra health while you're fighting him. And the other item I have equipped are freezing pots. Like I said, he's weak to all status effects, including frost. So using freezing pots, you can instantly proc a frostbite on him, which takes off a big chunk of his health, and it also makes him weaker to all forms of damage for 30 seconds. Unfortunately, freezing pots require rhymed crystal buds to craft, and the only rhymed crystal bud plants that respawn are located in the Consecrated Snowfield, and you need to kill Niall to get to the Consecrated Snowfield. However, I do have a guide where I discovered a method of farming them before getting to the Snowfield, and that'll be linked in the description if you want to check that out. It's a little time-consuming to set up the farm and actually farm the buds that you need, but if you're having trouble with Niall, the freezing pots really help, so I strongly recommend checking out that guide. For the first method of killing Niall, I'm going to use a great sword, in my case the Flamberge, with the Stormblade Ash of War. So before entering the boss fight, I drink my Wondrous Physic and I cast Golden Vow, and then I switch over to the Star Fist with Storm Stomp and I two-hand it. I run up to the knight on the right, he's the guy with the dual swords, and I hit him with two charged R2s. You might want to play it safe and only do one, and then back off before you get hit by Niall. But the Star Fist is fast enough that you should probably be able to get two off. So the dual swords knight gets this sort of storm assault type attack, where he charges towards you, and then brings his sword down to attack you. Here you're going to see him start winding up for it, so he pulls both of his swords to his left side, and he does a stomp so you have to get away from him before he starts swinging the swords. And then when he dashes toward you, the dash itself doesn't have a hitbox. That's the hitbox. It's when he swings his sword at the very end of it that has a hitbox that you need to dodge. So he does a storm caller. I get away from him. Shoots towards us. No hitbox, no hitbox. Dodge. It's when he brings the swords down that you need to dodge. So there's a delay between the end of the dash and the actual hit. And so you saw, while he was recovering from that attack, I was able to move up on him and attack him for a punish window, so I did another charge R2 with the Star Fist and got the Stance Break. So now with the Dual Swords guy dead, it's time to deal with the Shield guy. Here he does a move that's similar to the other guy's attack, so he raises his shield and does a Storm Stomp, so make sure you get away from him when he starts raising the shield. Then he dashes towards you, there's a delay, and then you gotta dodge. If you dodge once he reaches you, then you're gonna get hit by the Storm Stomp. Here it is again, raises the shield, throws a storm stomp, make sure you're not next to him when that happens, dashes toward you, no hitbox, no hitbox, dodge. I like to dodge behind him. You could go for a backstab if you want, but instead I decide to hit him with a storm stomp so I can do a charge R2. 
That way I'm uh, breaking down his poise health so that I can get the stance break on him. There you saw he came toward me and I didn't get a chance to punish him because Niall was attacking me. So Niall moves really slowly during this phase of the fight. You can run away from Niall and then throw some kind of dagger at the knight to get him to come towards you. So here's the reason why we use Storm Stomp. This guy can be a real bitch to deal with, but Storm Stomp gives you hyper armor while you're doing it, so that's why I didn't get stunned by his attack there. And then Storm Stomp does a really heavy stun on him, which allows me to get a guaranteed Charged R2 in with the Star Fist. And then so after a total of three Charged R2s, it'll do a stance break and I can get a repost. And then you saw after the repost, I woke him up with a Storm Stomp because sometimes he can attack right out of the wake up. And so it's better to hit him with the Storm Stomp to make sure he's stunned. Here you're going to see, so when you kill both knights, Niall will start going into phase two. So he'll do this transition where he does this huge storm color thing and then summons down lightning and goes like Super Saiyan 2. So during this animation, you need to get away from him so you're not in the storm. And then I like to hit him with a freezing pot to hit him with frostbite. And I throw poison bone darts at him to poison him so that he's taking damage over time during the fight. So here's the strategy for this Stormblade method. If you're a distance away from him, he will most likely do that stomp where he charges up with lightning and then he jumps up in the air and he's going to come directly above you and then he's going to shoot down. You're going to have to get used to the timing on the delay there because there is a delay before he comes down and actually hits you with that stomp. And then afterwards he'll usually do an attack. If you're in front of him, he'll try to stab you with the halberd. I'll show you what happens when you're behind him later. But so what we're going to do is we're going to keep running away from him and hit him with Stormblade. So you see after he lands, he's going to do a stab at me. I sprinted away from him. It's safer if you dodge to the side after his landing because the stab with the halberd can do like a roll catch on you if you just go straight backwards from him. But so what I'm doing here is I just keep running away and hitting him with Stormblade. If I'm close to him, I can hit him with a melee like that. But the main strategy of this method is to just hit him with Stormblade. So you just saw he did one of his ground lightning stomps, so we're going to take a look at that again. So he's going to charge up his leg, stick it up in the air, and you have to be careful. You, you need to learn, you know, the patience, the delay to not just instantly reaction roll. Because if you roll too early, then you're going to get hit by that because it has a lot of tracking on it. So you have to wait until his foot is up in the air. So here it is again. I'm not attacking him. I'm not spamming R1. I'm waiting to see what he does lifts his foot up. Instead of immediately reaction rolling, I wait for his foot to be up and charge with lightning. Then I dodge it. And then afterwards, you see, because I was behind him, he does one stab with the halberd on his left side toward the back, and then he does a big swipe. You can safely stay close to him and dodge that, but I prefer to just dodge backward away from him. Here, he's going to do his storm stomp into a jump up in there again. Because I was behind him afterwards, he does a stab into the swipe, so I just sprinted away. Um, you can also just roll away if you want, especially with light rolls. And then I happen to get a poise break with Stormblade, because it does an okay amount of poise damage. So I hit him with the repost, and then immediately back off and just start casting Stormblade again. Occasionally, he'll do a dash like that, but as long as you stay at range, he'll usually just do the storm stomp into the jump up in the air, and that one's really easy to dodge. You can consistently bait that attack out by staying at range from him. So our strategy is to back off and hit him with Stormblade, but here I needed to refill. So that punish window where you can hit him with Stormblade is also an opportunity to heal. And you also saw after I finished drinking the flask, I started throwing poison bone darts at him. I didn't realize he was still poisoned, but uh, you know, if the poison runs out, you can hit him with poison again. And then he did this attack, so I knew I had time to throw a freezing pot to build up some frostbite on him. This is the same kind of thing as what the Banished Knights do. When he comes at you, it's not an instant hitbox. You have to wait for the delay and then dodge the swing on his weapon instead of just dodging immediately. And you saw there, my first freezing pot that I threw a second ago didn't hit him with frostbite. So when he did the storm stomp to do the jump up in the air, I hit him with a second freezing pot to inflict frostbite on him. And I just want to take a second to point out this hitbox here. So you can see the tip of his halberd is pretty fucking close to hitting me right now. I actually accidentally froze on this frame when I finished recording that last line. But yeah, so you should dodge to the side to dodge this stab if you end up in front of him after his uh, jump attack instead of running backwards because that should have hit me. I'm really surprised it didn't. And in fact, this next one is going to hit me because I didn't dodge. So I try to sprint away. I try to do a sprint jump to get a little extra distance, but it wasn't enough. So you should wait for a little delay there and dodge to the side instead of running backwards. 
That hit didn't do a huge amount of damage because I had the Ritual Shield Talisman on, but you see I still healed anyway because I want to keep my health at max so I can keep the Ritual Shield buff active so that I don't take too much damage when I get hit. Here he does another Storm Assault Dash, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So first I'm hitting him with Poison Bone Darts while I have an opportunity to because I want to proc that poison on him again for the damage over time. If you get too close, the Storm Caller can hit you, so be careful. But here, so he dashes towards me, delay, dodge. So there's a delay between when he gets close to you and you have to dodge. And you see how he puts his halberd down on the ground like that afterwards? Um, we'll talk about that more later, because there's a couple attacks he can do where he, after the recovery from that dash, he'll do like a storm stomp type of thing with the halberd uh, if you're close to him. After this jump attack, he did the stab at me, and instead of just trying to sprint away, I dodged it, but it would have been safer if I had just dodged to the side. Here he does another jump attack. Afterwards, he's going to do the stab, and you'll see because I'm close enough to him, he does a swipe afterwards. So if you're attacking him in melee, make sure you dodge that swipe afterwards too. And I think he can combo that like two or three more times if I'm not mistaken. So be careful of that if you're attacking him at melee range. This clip right here demonstrates the importance of not spamming attacks. So if I'm ever close to him, I'll hit him with at most two attacks and then I stop because he'll do an attack of his own afterwards. If I had kept spamming Stormblade there, then I would have gotten hit by that Storm Stomp. So it's really important to take your time and be patient. If you just keep mashing the triggers, you're gonna get owned. After this jump attack, you're going to see I discovered you don't even have to dodge if he does a stab because you can just sprint to the side. But it's safer to dodge, so you should probably just dodge. So here's his other lightning stomp attack that he can do if you're behind him now. So he puts his leg up, there's a delay, and then you gotta dodge right before he swings his leg. It'll probably take you a bit of practice to get the timing down, but once you do, it's really consistent to dodge as long as you're patient and focused. And then I quit the fight because I got him down to one hit and I want to show the other methods so I didn't want to kill him. For this method, I'm going to hit him with the Antspur Rapier with Poisonous Mist. So at the start of the fight, this time I decided to use Cragblade on the Starfist, but I definitely recommend that you use Storm Stomp instead. Cragblade gives the Starfist enough extra poise damage that it'll break the Knight's stances in two charged R2s, but it doesn't give you a good way of dealing with the shield guy so I think you're a lot better off using Storm Stomp. So there, I broke that guy's stance in two charge R2s, and then I got the repost on him, but he's not quite dead yet, so I just lure him away. He'll usually just rush at you while the shield guy slowly approaches. Now I have this problem of trying to get an opening on the shield guy, and you see there, I went in for a jump attack, but he hit me with a Storm Stomp. If you don't have a method to counter this guy's shield specifically, then it can be a real bitch to deal with him. You can try to bait out that attack so that you can get a backstab on him like I did, but I think it'll be a lot better off just having Storm Stomp for the hyper armor it gives you, so that if he does a shield bash, you can hit him with Storm Stomp and stun him out of it, and then counterattack him. So now with both knights dead, I pull out the Answer for Rapier, I get away from Nihal, and I hit him with a Freezing Pot, and then I'm going to cast Poisonous Mist on the Rapier to buff it with Poison, since he's far away, he's going to open up with his lightning jump. And then I ended up behind him, so he does this attack. So I did two dodges to get in front of him so that I don't get hit by either the initial stab or the swipe follow-up that he does. So when I dodged the follow-up attack after the lightning jump, he did a lightning kick on the ground. So he goes into neutral, then he turns and he looks back at me because I was behind him, raises the leg, wait for the delay, then dodge. And then afterwards, I can get one or two hits on him, and then you gotta stop attacking because he might do something. In this case, he decided to do a Storm Stomp, so he raises his leg, and you only have a split second to react to that. So you gotta keep an eye out for when he does something like that. And in that case, I just had to dodge backwards. If you try to dodge forward or to the side on one of his Storm Stomps, then you'll get hit by the AoE. So you have to dodge backwards to get away from it. Then you saw afterwards, after he did the Storm Stomp, he does this dash, and he jumps off to the side. I'm not quite sure why he did that. It was a, probably a positioning-based thing. But right out of the dash, he does a Storm Caller, so you gotta dodge backwards to get away from it, and then he's gonna dash toward me. So make sure you don't get caught by the delay. You gotta wait a second once he gets close to you before you dodge. And then I think I get, like, one attack in, and then I stop attacking, because sometimes he does this follow-up, 
where he does another storm stomp with his halberd. So now you'll probably recall that a minute ago I said you can't dodge the storm stomp if you don't dodge backwards. Well, that's only partially true. When he does a dashing storm assault type of attack that we're watching again like this one, some of them, not all of them, but some of them can do a follow up storm stomp afterwards. This one requires precise timing. You have to wait until right before he brings the halberd down. And if you dodge toward him and land close enough to him that you're not inside the storm, then you won't get hit by it. If you learn the timing on it, it's really worth doing because it gets you a bunch of extra damage. But I don't blame you if you don't want to do that. And the much safer strategy is to dodge. So remember that delay. Dodge. And then instead of trying to attack him or anything, just run away and see if he does the follow-up storm stomp. If he does do the follow-up storm stomp, then you'll be glad that you ran away and dodged it safely. If he doesn't do it, then you missed out on one or two hits that you could have gotten as a follow-up before he does another attack, which really isn't a big deal. This big blizzard is something that I think he can only do once during the fight. So you'll see it has a long charge up period. So as long as you're not spamming the attack button, you have plenty of time to run away. And obviously since it's such a huge storm, you have to run away. Sometimes he'll do it and stand still like he does in this clip. Sometimes he'll start charging it up and then cancel it. Or sometimes he'll do the attack and then dash toward you and you have to do a delayed dodge. And then he has a recovery afterwards during which you can punish him. So in this case, he did the blizzard and then stayed in place, and he has this long recovery period afterward. Um, I only got in one or two hits before he finished recovering. Uh, it probably would have been better for me to throw a freezing pot at him, but I wanted to build up the Scarlet Rot and Bleed on him with the Asper Rapier. Now, he did a lightning kick just a second ago, and I hope you go and rewatch that if you're having difficulty dodging that attack, so you can see what I mean by staying focused and focusing on the delay that that attack has. His two storm kicks are really easy to dodge, but you have to be on top of things. You have to really just keep your eyes open during this fight. Here, I made arguably a pretty unwise decision, and I decided to throw a second freezing pot at him to proc the frostbite. Procking the frostbite's cool, but I shouldn't have done it at such close range, and I got kind of lucky that I was able to dodge that attack. Here, you see me get hit by one of his storm stomps, so let's watch that again. So while I have a punish window after that attack that he just did, I attack him a couple times and then he does a storm stomp. So I had time to react to it, but not quite enough. I think maybe, I can't say this for sure because I haven't tried it out. But so you see here, he charges it up. I, ha I just don't have quite enough time to be able to move backwards and then dodge it. But by the looks of it, most of it is centered towards his left leg. So not the leg that did the stomp. So it's on my left, but it's his right leg that does the stomp. And you see, like, his left leg is in the middle of the storm. So I think that if I had dodged to the left, so that's my left, which is toward his lightning leg, if I had dodged to my left instead of backwards, that I might have been able to avoid the storm. But I can't confirm that because I haven't tried it, and I just thought of it right now while watching this footage. So maybe try that if that attack is giving you trouble. Here he does another dash, and then I don't attack because I know he's going to follow it up with a storm stomp. And that time I didn't dodge it perfectly so it hit me. So I should have sprinted backwards and then dodged backwards on that one. But so the beautiful thing about this method is that at this point in the fight, I'm pretty confident this is when I noticed that he's both poisoned and rotted. So I can just walk away from him and let him die, which is what I opt to do. So you saw there I backed off and I dodged backwards instead of trying to get the perfect dodge. So I dodged a delayed attack on the dash, and then instead of attacking or doing anything, and even if I wasn't edge walking just to show off, I would still run backwards without attacking him, and then dodge before he does the actual uh, storm stomp with the halberd. But yeah, so he's poisoned and rotted, and I'm pretty sure he's at low enough health that he's going to die even if I don't attack. I did end up getting one or two attacks in there. There it was again, I just ran away before he did the storm stomp. But yeah, so I do attack him a bit just to make sure that he's going to die. And, you know, I recast Poisonous Mist because the poison doesn't last as long as the Rot does when he's inflicted with it. I think the poison only lasts for 30 seconds and the Rot lasts for, I think, 60 or 90 seconds. And in fact, yeah, I see now that the poison and the Rot had run out. So I inflicted him with poison again and he's at low enough health where the poison is going to kill him even if I don't attack him at all. So that's what I do and I just walk away. 
Here he keeps doing his storm assault dash things. And so on this particular one, I managed to get a perfect dodge on it again. So right before there's like a one second that he's charging up the storm and then he does the stomp. And if you land directly in front of him, you can perfectly dodge the storm and not get hit by it at all. But it's really inconsistent and you should probably just run away and then dodge backwards so that you're not within range of the storm at all so you don't have to worry about it at all. Finally, our final method of killing Niall is going to be using just the Star Fist, which is a really, really strong weapon. So in this case, I had Storm Stomp on it again. Storm Stomp is going to be useless against Niall himself, but it really helps against the Knights. So I run up to the Dual Swords Knight, which is on the right side. In this case, I managed to get three Charge R2s and break his stance, but I shouldn't have done that because I got hit by Niall there. I was still lucky enough to get the repost because the shield guy hadn't aggroed on me and so he didn't come in and hit me uh, in addition to Niall, but you should really just do the two charged R2s and then run away and lure the knight over to you for the third one. And you see I either dodge his storm dash assaults, whatever the fuck you want to call them, or I hit him with storm stomp and then I go for charged R2s on him to fuck him up. Once Niall gets close, run away, try to lure the shield guy away from Niall. In this case, I used a throwing dagger that made him run towards me, and then as he got close to me, I hit him with Storm Stomp. I almost died there, but I got lucky to not get hit. That's one of the reasons why it's so good to have light rolls. So when he's sprinting towards me, I use Storm Stomp a little early because it has a, like, a delayed hitbox that persists for a second. And so he will run into the Storm Stomp, you know, a little bit after I actually cast it. And then once both knights are dead, Niall is going to do his transition. Hit him with the freezing pot to hit him with frostbite. Hit him with a bunch of poison bone darts to poison him. And then for this method, what we're going to be focusing on doing is hitting him with charged R2s. So first I make sure that he's poisoned. That time I got hit by the storm stomp there because I messed up that dodge, but that's just my fault. Here, after his lightning jump attack, he does the stab because I'm in front of him. So I dodge the stab. I hit him with a charged R2 because the star fist is really fast. And then instead of attacking again, I know he's going to do a follow up. So I dodge instead of attacking again. And then after that dodge, I could have attacked him, but I wanted to top off my health so I have the ritual shield. So instead of using his punish window to attack him, I use the punish window to heal. So I want to talk about this storm stomp a little bit more. So last time you saw when I was too close to him, I said I might have been able to dodge it if I went to the left instead of dodging backwards. Because it comes out too fast for me to run away a little bit and then dodge it. But I want to take a quick second to talk about the intended design of the boss. I'm pretty confident Niall's kit is designed in such a way that he wants you to stay at a medium range from him to bait out his attacks like his dashes or his lightning jump. They want you to get him to do an attack that gives you a punish window afterwards to attack him. If he chooses to do this attack while you're close to him, you're not going to be able to dodge the storm stomp. And that's fine, you have, you know, a vigor stat and you have health flasks so that you can take hits and not die. But it's better if you adjust your playstyle to work with his kit instead of against it. The developers knew that if they let you stay up close to him, you could just dodge his slow halberd attacks and then just fucking wail on him and kill him. So they want to make him do stuff to push you away from him to keep the fight dynamic and interesting. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to tailor build your character to be able to fight this specific boss. There you saw I used Storm Stomp, it didn't work. Don't bother using Storm Stomp against him. But you don't have to specifically build your character for each boss, but it helps to understand how the bosses work and try to play around their kit instead of just rushing at them and mashing the attack buttons. There's more nuance to this game than that. Here you saw he did his blizzard attack where he does a dash at me afterwards. So I dodged that and then you get a really long recovery afterwards where you can uh, punish him. And I got the poise break on him and did the repost. So that did a bunch of damage. I just barely managed to dodge that lightning kick there. Uh, so you really got to be on your toes in this fight for when those things start coming up. You could use something like Endure instead of, you know, an Ash of War that does damage. And that way, if he does one of those attacks, you can use Endure and not get knocked down by it. And Endure also gives you 50% damage resistance to all forms of damage. So it's really helpful to have something like that in case you're not sure if you can dodge an attack. And speaking of Ashes of War, I tried hitting him with Storm Stomp there and it killed me because I didn't have time to dodge. So uh, don't use Storm Stomp against Niall. 
do use Storm Stomp against his knights, don't use it against Nile himself. And definitely don't get frustrated if you die. That's part of this genre of games. You're gonna die a lot. Every time you die, it's a learning experience where you can look back at your mistakes and figure out what you did wrong. In this clip, I had switched back over to Cragblade instead of Storm Stomp. So that puts me at a bit of a disadvantage against the Knights, but Cragblade is gonna be more useful against Nihal. It's really up to your personal preference. Or, you know, you could like swap weapons out. You don't have to use just the Starfist for the fight. You could use a Starfist to, you know, with Storm Stomp to kill the Knights and then switch over to the Flamberge or something like I did. So it's just up to you, but the Starfist is a really solid weapon, so I like using it a lot. And like you see here, like I I'm just having to bait out this guy's attacks because if he hits me with that Storm Stomp, then he's either going to fuck me up or he's going to kill me. So I have to be careful not to do that, which is why it sucks to not have something that helps me deal with shields specifically. Now, there are a lot of things that are really good against shields. So, Scythes, um, the Lucerne, a couple Halberds, the Shodel, the Eclipse Shodel, anything that has, like, a hook shape to it, you know, um, or, like, a sickle shape to it, uh, is good against shields, because those will get shield chip, which means that they do a percentage of their damage through the shield, even when the opponent is blocking. And you can also get Ashes of War, like, Impaling Thrust or Piercing Fang, that will also get a lot of shield chip. So if you put that on like a greatsword or something, then that's really effective against the shield guy too. Now here's something you need to be careful of if you're attacking Nile before he transitions to phase two, is he's hitting me with these fucking roll catches. Those attacks just have a delay on them, and I'm pretty sure it's easier to dodge them if you dodge to your left, because he's hitting you with the halberd on his left, which is your right. But really, before he does his phase 2 transition, you should probably just stay away from him until he does the phase 2 transition. Here, if you're a god gamer, you can do this on purpose. I accidentally got a low profile on that fucking halberd swing. So the animation of the attack I did brought my hitbox down low enough that he swung over my head. So I did not do that on purpose, and I will never be able to do that on purpose. But there are people who can, and if you want to put the effort into it, you can really, you know, show a lot of combat expression and mastery in this game, which is one of the things that I may think makes it pretty much the best game of all time. Anyway, so he does his blizzard here. I think he does it at about 90% health, and then I wasn't able to get close enough to him to actually attack him, so I hit him with a couple freezing pots to hit him with the frostbite. Here, you see, slow and steady wins the race. I don't spam the attack button. I hit once or twice, and then I wait for him to make a move, and I dodge. What makes the Starfist great is how fast it can do poise damage, so you get a lot of stance breaks and a lot of reposts. I'm actually on New Game Plus 2, so he has a bunch more poise than he would have on just regular New Game. So if you're on your first playthrough and you're fighting him, you'll get stance breaks way more often than I do in this video. Something that really helps with that is Crag Blade, which increases the amount of poise damage you do, which is why I got another one there. And when he does his dash afterwards, I just run the fuck away, because I'm not going to be able to dodge the Storm Stomp. Here, he does it again, and this time I decided to get risky, and I hit him with the Charge R2, and I got hit for it. So, probably, you just want to play it safe, because that really wasn't all that worth it. And while he's at a distance from me, I'm hitting him with the Poison Bone Darts, not just to apply poison to him, but also to keep his poise from regenerating to make it easier to get a stance break on him. Here, I dodge an attack, get an attack in, and then I stop attacking so that when he does something like a lightning kick, I can dodge it. And then here you saw I proc a bleed on him because the Starfist has bleed built into it, so that's also really cool. And now here, I'm pretty close to procking poison on him, so I throw a bunch of poison bone darts. I got a little too overconfident, so he got hit by that storm stomp when he got close enough to me. But now he's poisoned, and I'm pretty sure for the rest of this fight, I just run away because uh, the poison's going to kill him because he's at such low health. So that's a really good reason to keep poison bone darts on you. Or, you know, you could have used something like Scarlet Rod if you wanted or whatever. And of course, I could finish him off pretty easily if I wanted to, but I wanted to show off for the camera because, you know, why not? Uh, this is actually a good opportunity for me to say, not just for Commander Nile, but for any boss in this game, 
If you're having difficulty with them, just don't attack. Just stop attacking. Go into the boss fight and focus on learning their attacks. Focus on learning how to dodge their attacks, figure out what attacks they can do as a follow-up, which attacks have delays, which attacks they do based on your position. It sounds like it's a lot, but I promise none of the bosses in this game are actually all that complex. Personally, the only bosses that I personally haven't really mastered are Margit and Morgoth because I just always use the shackle to kill them, and I kill them before they have any chance to really do anything. But it's really helpful to learn how to dodge their attacks, and then as you get more confident in dodging their attacks, then you can start adding in attacks of your own. You know, figure out what their punish windows are, figure out which attacks have a, a long delay afterwards where they do a long recovery animation or something, and just take a little bit of time to practice and learn, because that's what these games are really about. They want you to repeat, they want you to try and try again. You're gonna die a lot, you're gonna get hit a lot, but if you stay in it, you'll learn and you'll get better. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll catch you later.